Are you familiar with the various types of sampling methods? There are several types of sampling methods, and it's essential to choose the method best suited for your study. In today's video, we're going to talk about sampling and introduce you to six sampling methods that are commonly used to conduct research. I'm Sissy from Jotform. Let's get right to it. During an election, the news is full of articles reporting on national polls. But how could the polls know the opinions of every voter in the country? Pollsters utilize sampling methods to identify a small group of people who represent the broader population. This is called sampling, and in statistics, it's the process of selecting members from a target population to research. Sampling is very common as it is difficult to collect data from every single person in a target group. It's crucial to use the right sampling method as the better the sample group represents the target population, the more accurate your results will be. But before diving into what sampling methods you could use, let's look at some basic sampling terms. The term sampling frame refers to the list of individuals from which the sample will be drawn. Then there's the term sample size, which refers to the size of the target population. Generally, the larger your sample size, the more accurate your results will be. Another term you should know is margin of error, which is the percentage that shows how much you can expect your survey results to reflect the views of the overall population. Now that you're familiar with a few common terms, let's look at sampling methods. Sampling methods are sorted into probability and non-probability methods. To determine which method will be best for you, consider what you plan to do with your results, as well as any other factors. First, there's the probability sampling methods. Probability sampling ensures that each member of the population will have the same chance of being selected, meaning that your results will not be skewed or biased. Try one of these four probability sampling techniques. One probability sampling method is the simple random sample, which is entirely based on chance, meaning that every member has an equal chance of being included in the sample. For instance, if a teacher puts the names of all students into a hat and draws a specific number of slips without looking, that would be a simple random sample. Then there's the systematic sample, in which each member of the population is assigned a number but instead of using a random number generator, population members are selected at set intervals. For instance, a principal assigns a number to every name on an alphabetized list of the school students. The principal would then begin at a random starting point and select every 10th student until a random sample of 100 students has been reached. But be aware of the hidden patterns in the list that are not entirely random. If the principal's alphabetized list was also categorized by grade, beginning with freshmen, then the sample would skew towards the younger students. Another probability method is the cluster sample. Cluster sampling divides a population into subgroups, ensuring that each has characteristics that are similar to the sample as a whole. So instead of selecting individuals from the entire population, you're randomly selecting individuals from each subgroup. This method is best for large populations. For example, let's say that you own a chain of restaurants and you want to survey your employees. Instead of surveying all employees, you might use the cluster method to collect data from five restaurants that each have a similar number of employees. Lastly, there's the stratified sample, which splits the population into groups and randomly selects some members from each group for the sample. Then you calculate how many people should be sampled from each subgroup based on the overall proportions of the population. Now let's look at a few non-probability sampling methods. Non-probability sampling is both easier and cheaper, but because it isn't random, you can't use it to accurately test your hypothesis. Even still, it can be useful for qualitative research. First, there's the convenient sample method, which involves selecting a sample that's already available. For example, let's say there's a retailer who gives a discount to shoppers in exchange for completing a questionnaire. That sample would only include the shoppers who participated, but their answers would still be useful to the owner of the store. Then there's the voluntary response sample. 
A common example of this is the online public survey in which researchers collect data from volunteers. The samples are always biased because the people who are most likely to participate are those who have strong feelings about the subject and their opinions might not be representative of the overall population. With all that we learned today, let's take a moment to review. Sampling methods collect data from a representative group of the researcher's target population. A few sampling terms you should familiarize yourself with are sampling frame, sample size, and margin of error. Sampling methods are categorized as probability methods, such as the simple random sample, the systematic sample, the cluster sample, and the stratified sample and non-probability methods, such as the convenience sample and voluntary response sample. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Sissy from Jotform, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>